Hi everyone, welcome to another Onboarding to Azure. And in this video, I wanna look at geobalancing. And specifically, two of the primary solutions we have in Azure to help where I have deployments in multiple locations. Now we often talk about, hey, we have Azure. I maybe have a specific region that I'm leveraging. And we wanna make sure that deployment in that region is highly available. We spread our multiple instances over availability sets or availability zones, and we'll end up with some kind of front end to those services, um, likely some kind of load balancer. This could be uh, the load balancer from Azure. This could be Azure App Gateway. This could be a virtual appliance. But essentially, we have some public facing endpoint to our service, and that's great, but if I really want resiliency and continuity for my service that can survive maybe a regional level problem, or I just want services active in multiple regions so I'm closer to my customers, we think about, well, I'm gonna have multiple regions leveraged where there'll be deployments of my service in each of those regions, each of them with their own public facing endpoint. I may even have on-premises. I may have my on-premises location and it has some kind of service that it offers. And what I don't want is for my customers to have to use different endpoints if I'm in East US or West US or Europe or Asia. Um, that doesn't work. I don't want them to think about, oh, well, this one's down. I need to use a different URL instead. I need something to front this solution. So when we think about this, these are all internet facing services. And what is the internet? The internet is a bunch of networks connected together. As an organization, I have a network, I offer services out to the internet. Well, I probably use some carrier. Those carriers all connect together at certain points. We call them carrier hotels or fiber hotels, but they all meet, which enables the traffic to flow between different networks. It's what really makes the internet. And so from the internet, those connected networks, I wanna be able to get to a service that then goes to one of the endpoints that makes the most sense. So I can think about, well, Azure, Azure has its highly resilient network, this Microsoft global network. And then we can think about, well, then there's the internet. And I have this internet line, and on the Azure network, there's various points of presence that we have, that we meet into these various carrier hotels. So these go and connect in to those carrier hotels. They help connect those things. My location here on premises, well, that may use a certain point of presence from a certain carrier and they're connected as well. So this is kind of the internet. And then the blue line is the Azure network. So if I'm standing over here, so I'm a user, and I want to use the service. The service, for right now, we'll say it's been offered in these two Azure regions. Could be more Azure regions, um, could also be saying on-premises. Um, just needs to be a public-facing IP address. So the first solution is Traffic Manager. So with Traffic Manager, this is a DNS solution. That's an important point. So Traffic Manager, I have a name. It's something.trafficmanager.net. Now you're not gonna see that name. You are gonna create an alias in your own company's name. So if you had www. So I'll say saveltech.com that would be a C name, an alias record to the traffic manager name. So then when I as the client say, hey, I wanna go to saveltech.com, that will resolve to the traffic manager. And at this point, this traffic manager has been configured to point to these various endpoints. And then we have different routing options that I can configure on traffic manager. The most common one is performance. So with performance, based on where my DNS server that I'm making the request from is in relation to the possible endpoints, it will send me to the closest one in terms of latency. I.e., if I'm in East US, it will send me to the East US one. 
I mean, West US, the West US one, Europe, Europe one, etc. Whichever one is closest from a latency perspective. It's probing, so if one of these goes down, it won't send me there, it'll send me to the next closest one. I can also do things like priority. Hey, you always go to this one, but if this one's not there, then send it to this one instead. This might be useful for on-premises. Well, hey, I wanna to go to my on-premises, but if on-premises is down, well then send it to one of these Azure regions I'm using for my DR. I can do weighted. So, hey, we'll send a certain portion to this one, a different portion to here. I can base it on subnets, where things are coming from. I can base it on geographies. So different routing patterns. But the end result is I, as a client, essentially am making a DNS request and I'm going to get sent back a resolution that points me to one of the endpoints based on that routing. Let's say the one closest to me. At that point, traffic manager is done in this conversation. I then go and establish my connection with that endpoint. So if I think about this internet connection, so I'm now over the internet from where I am, I'm bouncing around the various points until I get to the internet, I get to that point of presence and I go and talk to the service. So I have this zigzag conversation to establish the TCP session and back again, establish the SSL and then back again, and then get a few bytes of some workload, then the next few bytes. So lots of chatter going over the internet this path. Who knows what the quality of that is, but it'll work for any service because it's DNS, it doesn't care. Once I've resolved that endpoint, I'm now just talking directly to that endpoint via the internet. And that's kind of the key point. Traffic manager works really for anything, but the communication is then wherever that is, whatever that latency is, that's just the reality. And I have to establish that TCP session, the SSL session, and then I get the bits of data in fairly small chunks at a time. Okay, what if it's a HTTP, HTTPS, HTTP2 workload? Well, then there's a different solution. And the different solution is front door. So if I think about for Azure front door, from a configuration perspective, it will seem similar. I can configure various endpoints that are public IPs. They could be in Azure services. Um, they could be on premises. There are some benefits for both of these. If they're like web apps, there's certain integration and detection of things happening. But with front door, it's only gonna work for that HTTP, HTTPS, HTTP2 traffic. But in addition to regions on the Microsoft Backbone network, they have a whole bunch of points of presence. I think there's like nearly 150 of them. Those points of presence hook into a huge number, thousands of different carriers today. So I can think about those points of presence. Well, actually, there's, there's lots of them all over the place. So maybe there's a point of presence over here, there's a point of presence over here, and they're all connected to that Azure Backbone Network. This direct connection, highly reliable, really low latency, high quality network. And they're all over the place. These 150 scattered around the world. With Azure Front Door, Instead of based around a DNS resolution and then I talk directly, this is based on Anycast. And the idea of Anycast is that I can have a service that has an IP, and that IP can actually be essentially served by multiple receiving hosts. They all can have that same IP address configured on them. And through the magic of BGP, it will actually route it to the one that's the least number of hops, i.e get me to the one that's as close to me as possible. So here, let's say I'm this same user. This time I'm gonna have an IP address, and it might be a DNS name that resolves to that IP address. But now the conversation's a little bit different. We draw the user again, and it makes that any cast. So it's gonna go to the closest point of presence to that user. So this is very close to them, all over the world. So this time, there's a communication here that establishes kind of the TCP. Then there's a communication back and forth for the SSL. Now this is all local, remember. This is not going to the back end service. This is very close to them. So I get a great um, performance here. And then I say I want some data. So I make this request for a little bit of traffic. 
And at this point, that request goes over the Azure Backbone network. I'm not bouncing around the internet. I'm on the Microsoft network. And on the Microsoft network, I make that request for the bit of data. That again, at this point, I can use different routing mechanisms. I can use the latency, the one that's closest to me. Um, I can use priority, I can use waiting. So I have those different options again. Now we'll go and get the data from the service, but instead of just getting the few bytes that's requested, I'm gonna get a big chunk, eight megabytes of data. And I'm gonna have it here ready so that then I can serve those small bits all, I've just made kind of this one connection back and got a big chunk of data. Then I'll serve it. And if I know there's more data in that file, I'll go and prefetch the next bit. So my end user experience is phenomenal here. Hey, look, my establishment, the session is very, very close to me. And then to actually go and get the data rather than bouncing over the internet and going over this super direct network to the data, which is then serving it to me. So even if I didn't have multiple targets, if I just had one, it's still gonna improve the end user experience because instead of them establishing the TCP over the internet, the SSL over the internet, and then little bits of data at a time, local TCP, local SSL, local requests for a small piece of data. Hey, get a big chunk of data over this connection, have it here, and then serve it in chunks as it's requested. So we get a much, much better experience for this. There's other things I can do here though. So I can think about, well, I have these points of presence. I can have things like web application firewall. I can actually have custom rules. And just to be clear what we're doing, this is called split TCP. The idea that, hey, I'm making this request and then I'm actually serving it and going a different path to actually go and get the data. I'm splitting that connection, essentially. Now this only works for HTTP and HTTPS though, and HTTP2. So that's really the, the difference between these things. If I just have a workload, Traffic Manager will work for anything, but it's not really giving me any benefits above and beyond, hey, it will point me to possible targets. Yes, I've got those routing mechanisms based on performance or weighted or priority, but it's not doing anything else. With Front Door, this Anycast had these points of presence close to them, great performance, the actual communication to actually get the data over that Azure Backbone network. And even if it was going to an on-premises, it will still take the Azure Backbone network as far as it can, and then jump off at some point of presence closer to the on-premises to actually go and get the data. So it's still gonna give me that much, much better performance. Um, other things. Again, it's still monitoring from those endpoints to make sure they are healthy and only send me to the healthy ones. I can also cache here. So I'm talking about this in terms of a user, but probably there's not one user. There's probably lots of users. And so as soon as I've established this session that I'm using, I can reuse that. If I fetch this piece of static data, so it's not dynamic, but if it's static content, I can actually turn on caching. So now when that second person comes along, this one uh, is wearing a hat and some glasses, he's very happy. Um, when he goes and does that request, yes, he establishes the TCP close, SSL close. Now when he requests that data in those little chunks, well that data's already sitting here. He doesn't even have to go and do this to go and get it. It's here, so he's just gonna serve that data close. So Front Door does a lot of great things for me. It's a much more reliable network. It's a direct path. It's gonna reduce latency, give me a better performance, less drop packets. What I would really say for this, if it is HTTP, HTTPS, HTTP2, use Front Door. I mean, that's what it's there for. And while this is a new service that's available to us to use, this is not a new service to Microsoft. Microsoft have been using this for their own properties for many years. It's just now it's being made available to us to use for our services. If it's not HTTP, HTTPS based, then sure, I can use Traffic Manager. That will work for anything. But realize it's not getting me all those benefits about going directly over that Azure backbone. I'm not getting that close point of presence for the session establishment and the communication. I'm not getting the caching. I can't do the web application firewall. I'm not getting those benefits from it. I'm not using that any cast to find the point of presence closest to me. 
So I hope that made sense. Um, really kind of just quick, I wanted to summarize what they were and the differences between them. DNS works for anything. Front door, it's really just HTTP, HTTPS. But because of these points of presence, I'm reducing a lot of the communication over the internet and then even to get the data going over our network. Hope that was useful. I hope to see you in another video soon. Take care.